Welcome to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. I am your host, Sherry T., and this is the best day of your life because God is in control. Our show today is Conversation with Cousins from a Christian Perspective, featuring Eddie J. and your host, Sherry T. Enjoy the show after a word from our sponsor. The Believer for Life Christian clothing brand is now on Amazon.com forward slash Believe for Life. Good morning, good morning, good morning, or good evening, whatever time of day you have chosen to meet with us again. We are, well, my name is Sherry T, and my cousin's name is? My name is Eddie J, and again, we are grateful and thankful for you uh, being with us again, uh, uh, continuing to rock with us as we continue to have uh, this conversation. Again, we are grateful and thankful for all of you who have started with us from the beginning and those who have come on along the journey. Again, we are grateful and thankful for all of you. Uh, we want to ask that you continue to share and subscribe. Uh, this get the word out. Let them know the conversation with Cousins from a Christian perspective is on and popping. Again, we are talking about uh, things that we don't typically talk about in church. So okay. again, we want you to go ahead and get the word out. Let people know that the conversation is um, is real and genuine. Yeah. Uh, it's not scripted. Uh, what well, we just allow the Holy Spirit to flow. Uh, we have a topic. Well, we have a couple of scriptures that we chew on. We don't discuss this with one another. Uh, I, we allow God to work on each and, uh, of us individually, and then we come on and have this conversation. Amen. So again, that's how we've been rocking it from the beginning, and that's how we will continue to rock. Uh, so again, this is episode 35. Woo! Yeah, this is episode 35. And again, in the previous two uh, uh, episodes, we talked about rejection. Mm -hmm. We talked about rejection. Again, we are still in this series dealing with generational curses, uh, strongholds, and breaking every chain. Uh, so again, today we want to look at breaking the chains of rebellion. Amen. That's what we want to look at on today, breaking the chain of rebellion. And again, the first scripture we want to uh come from is uh, Isaiah chapter 19, chapter 1 rather, uh, verses 19 and 20. Uh, but again, to really get the context of this, uh, just to get us in, 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 in tune, uh, Judah had messed up. They were in sin. Mm -hmm. They had, as Israel do, sometimes they do right and then they fall down. They uh -huh. do right, then they fall down. And here we are in a period where they have fallen off. Uh -huh. They have fallen off the wagon and the Lord uh, God is telling them to repent. Uh, so again, that's what they tell them. So I really got to start off at 16 just to tell you what they're dealing with because he is sharing with them to repent. When yeah, yeah. we mess up, we have to fess up. Let me say oh. that again. <laughs> when we mess up, we yeah. have to fess up. Right. And that's what the Lord was telling them. The cure for their sins, the sin that they were in, was uh -huh. to come clean before God. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm, I'm already at it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we want to have a cure for the sin that you may be in, uh -huh. you have to confess it. Amen. So again, in verse 16 to 20, I'm not going, it says, wash yourself, make yourself clean, uh -huh. put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, uh -huh. cease to do evil, learn to do good, uh -huh. seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, uh -huh. defend the fatherless, uh -huh. plead for the widow. And uh -huh. then this is a passage that says, Come now, let us reason together, right. says the Lord. Right, right, right. 
Though your sins are, are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be as wool. Uh -huh. So we see basically saying they have been messing up and God gives them the cure if they would just come clean, if they would just reason together and their sins would be as scarlet and uh, and your, though your sins are that scarlet, they will be white as snow. Yeah. He is telling them if you yeah. just get it right, just get it right. Just turn away yeah. uh, from your rebellion. Let me put yeah. it out there. Yeah. Uh, if you just do that, you'll be right. And then they'll get to the, the, the passage that we're looking at, mm -hmm. uh, 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 19 and 20. He says, if you are willing, uh -huh. uh -huh. you should eat the good of the land. Uh -huh. If you refuse and rebel, uh -huh. You shall be devoured by the sword for your mouth, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. So again, he basically tells them, you have to repent. Yes. Uh, you have to repent. Uh, and he gives them the option. You either can, uh, you either can be willing or obedient, uh -huh. or you can refuse and rebel. <laughs> he 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 puts it out there right yeah, yeah. clean for them. Right. right. Uh, uh, he says you either can be willing or uh -huh. obedient, uh -huh. or refuse and rebel. So here, God offered Judah a choice. Yeah. They could find hope in the midst of their chastisement uh -huh. from their empty ritual, religious ritual, uh -huh. and cleansing from their sin. Uh -huh. But they had to surrender their hearts before God uh -huh. and not refuse and rebel. Uh -huh. And so they had to be obedient. Wow. So there is a choice. There's a choice. Are you going to be willing and obedient? Ooh. Or are you going to refuse and rebel? Go ahead, cuz. Wow. Uh, you know, again, cuz, it's, 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 it's a fantastic uh, scripture to start us from, and, and the point is we're talking about rebellion, and and let us all just kind of look at our own selves for a minute. Before we came to know Jesus Christ, before we before we knew the condition that we were in, and now on the night that we came and said, Lord, make yourself real to me, we, 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 we were literally walking out the scripture in our life because we were in rebellion. Rebellion is just simply disobedient. That's why the Lord, and, and, and I, 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 I like the way it's put, and I like the way you start off because you just you start off with fire all the time, and again, you did not second guess this thing as you said you can do right or you do right and fall down, do right and fall down, and you just got to go ahead and bow your knee, bow your knee in repentance. Repentance is important because you cannot change the condition of your heart until you choose to make that decision to turn the thing around. Because you know, you we know right from wrong. And here and here, here we are. Judah is, is in a situation. And, and God comes to them plain and simple. He does not hesitate to tell them how to do it right. If you do it right, this is what, what's gonna happen. You're gonna, you're gonna eat the good of the land. But if you choose not to not to obey me, you're gonna be devoured. And how many of us are chasing things every day? that are devouring us up, just eating away at our innermost being. We're front, we, many people wake up frustrated, confused, on, on road rages day in and day out. You know, look at the condition of a nation. We ain't got, you know, we're looking at scriptures, but look at the condition of our own nation that we're in. Yeah. Our condition shows us that there is a, that repentance has to come. We all want revival, but revival ain't going to start unless we repent. My God, we got to. It's 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 a have to because if not, we are still going to be devoured by our own disobedience. But it's a choice that we make. It's it's a choice. God, He sets this thing. He sets this thing in motion. God sets them up for a conversation. And for let me go ahead and put my glasses on so I can really I can really tell you what I seen when you started this off because you went back at sixteen, which was really good. And God tells them again. Wash, make yourself clean. But when he gets to 17, he says, learn 
to mm. do well. Mm. That tells us that mm. we're going to have to sit down and learn some things, learn some principles and some promise to begin to institute them in our lives. This say is that a again, learn, say that, say, say, learning say that again. Say that again. <laughs> this, this, this is a learning situation. We're going to have to learn something. We have to learn these principles and promise to institute them into our lives. He said, learn to do well. Which tells me they wasn't learning nothing mm. because they was over here doing stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. Mm. Talk of, and the stuff they was learning was wrong. Sometimes we can learn wrong. Mm. We learn it, but it's it's the, it's the wrong way to learn. And God is saying you need to learn to do well. Wake up every day. That that takes me back to Solomon. Lord, you know what? He prayed. Lord, give me wisdom. That I might know how to what teach uh, uh serve the people that you have put into my path. My God. So he had to learn how he had to learn from wisdom. There's a wisdom that is honest, pure, and of good report. And this is what this this is what the Spirit is saying. Learn to do well. And then he tells them: seek justice, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, and plead for the widow. Mm. I mean, you can't get it no more simpler than that. This is what you should be learning. Mm. That you might walk in the principles and the promises that God has set. And then, and then God was so clever. After he gave them what to do, he told them how to choose life. He says, come now, let's reason together. What you going to reason with? God already put it down straight and simple. Yeah, Either yeah, you're going to yeah, follow yeah. it or you're not. You ain't even got a choice, right? Your, your choice, you do have a choice. But he said, if you can come, we, we, can, re you can, we can reason together. So that when you come to him in repentance to learn to do well, he what he says, your sins are gonna be covered. Guys, I'm gonna hand that back over to you real quick. So now one of Satan's greatest desires is that we become rebellious. Let me say that again. One of Satan's greatest desires is that we become rebellious. So, 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 uh, uh, this is because Satan knows disobedience and rebellion against God and his word open our lives to destruction. I need y'all to get this. I need y'all to get this. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to say it one more time. One of Satan's greatest desires is that we become rebellious. Because this is because Satan knows disobedience and rebellion against God and his word open our lives to destruction. Satan wants us to rebel because if we rebel, we will not fulfill uh, the plan and the purpose God has for our lives. Y'all do know God has a plan and a purpose for your life, don't you? Uh, God has a plan and purpose for each and every one of our lives. But if, we, if, if Satan can, can get us to be a disobedient and rebel, uh, it ain't nothing but destruction, and we will not be able to fulfill uh, the plan and the purpose for our lives. So Satan is going to do everything in his power to keep us in the disobedience. Yeah, yeah, Satan is going to do everything in his power to keep us in rebellion because he knows Satan knows if we are disobedient and rebellious, uh, that leads our life to destruction. And because we are living our lives in destruction by being disobedient and rebellion, then we can fulfill the plan and purpose for our lives. Mm -hmm. I know I said that a few times, but I really needed us to get that because mm -hmm. to rebel is to oppose or disobey one authority or control. Uh -huh. 
And we got to also realize authority is for our protection. Yes. Let me say it again. Authority is for our protection. And when a person rebels against lawful authority, he forsakes the protection God has given and is open for demonic attack. Uh, Being stubborn, stiff-necked, proud, and teachable, and self-willed are all manifestations of rebellion. Uh, and, and, uh, and let me say this. Rebellion is often a result of rejection. Woo! We talked about rejection in the last two episodes. Rebellion and rejection could be twins. Because in children especially, rebellion is often a cry for attention. And like rejection, rebellion is not only a, a, a demon, but also a personality. Hey. Uh, 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 the rebellion personality is the outward manifestation, uh, manifestation, here we go again, I'm talking about another one, of double-mindedness. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, make the, make the, the connection point, Of rejection personality is, which is inward. Mm -hmm. So re rebellion personality acts out, lashes out, and shows out. Mm. Let me say that again. The rebellion personality acts out, mm -hmm. lashes out, mm -hmm. and shows out. Mm -hmm. So another, uh, 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 and I'm going to pass it over to you when I give this list. Uh, other demonic spirits associated with rebellion includes stubbornness, mm -hmm. unteachable, idolatry, mm -hmm. self-deception, self-delusion, self-seduction, witchcraft, uh, sorcery, divination, intimidation, control, manipulation, bitterness, so on, so on, and so on. Go, on, wow. Go ahead, Cuz. Wow, what a, what a treat. What a treat. One word bears, uh, bears fruits and, and, and limbs all over the place. Can't you just see all that? All of that you just said, the, the, the list that you ran down is just choking the life out of so many people. When all we have to do is say, Lord, help me. You know what, Lord? I'm sorry. I repent. Come back to the creator knowing that he is faithful to forgive you. And then learn of this, these things. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back because you said you, you, you were talking about um, uh, when, when you were talking, I had this thought about real freedom has boundaries. Mm. Real freedom has boundaries. Check this out. Like when we go to this, when, when we see a stop sign, that's a boundary. It's letting us know we need to stop and pay attention. Look both ways before we enter into that intersection. God's word, who the sun sets free, is free indeed because he sets these boundaries in place that we can experience real freedom. And so it takes us, it, we, we can, our deliverance comes when we understand the truth of God's word. And understanding yeah. this is knowing that when you said rebellion and rejection are twins, how many of us have experienced, because you know what, all of us have fallen short. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory. So we know where we're coming from. So we, I have to look back at my own life and, and those times that God had given me some instruction, I learned I don't want to do that. At the moment you say you don't want to do that, what you doing? Rebelling. You're rebelling against what God, he, he knows what's coming down the pipe. And our in our human nature, we always want to pull away and do our own thing. And God here is making it clear, if you do, you're going to be devoured. And then when we get all choked up, I call it going to the school of hard knocks, because that's what all this is. You go into the school of hard knocks. You learn it, you, you learn it, off of a tree that will, that will never produce the right fruit in your life. And so when you, when you do that, you come and say, Lord, you know what? I've had enough of this. Because you know what? We all graduate from the school of hard knocks because you get tired of going through that same cycle over and over again. You wake up and you come to your senses. That's what the prodigal son did. He came to his senses. He said, what? Why am I out here with the pigs? When, every, when even the servants are being treated well in my father's house. The servants knew how to obey the master. And our father is our, is our, he's our father. 
And all he's saying is, if you obey me, you you can eat the good of the land. He's just telling them right there. Yeah. So this this is why. So so when you you're looking at your life and you're looking at and I and I and I'm gonna call it stubborn and do, you know these are like the stubborn you think is a small thing, you know, because kids can be stubborn and you can yeah, I just want my way. No, that that is a small seed that can produce all the rebellion that will go on in your life. And when you turn around and you label that thing up under witchcraft, that that's where it's coming from. Because you know what? Satan himself, Lucifer, was called in in the kingdom of heaven. And he rebelled against God because he wanted to be just like God. He wanted to take the throne away from God. And God said, no, not today. It won't happen. I created you. Therefore, I the, the one that created is the one that we follow. We follow the God that created us, that formed yep. us. Because he had his best intention for humanity at the moment he blew into the nostril of man. Because he wanted what he, he he wanted this conversation to happen. God wanted to. We we are an expression of who He is. When everything when everything else that He created, He created. They they are given one assignment. A dog will always be a dog. A horse will always be a horse. Mm. But it, but a human will always have the right to choose. He puts us in such a place. Of victory, the Bible tells us over John, choose life, choose this day whom you're gonna serve. He set before us a, 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 a open and a closed door. Choose life and live. So it's gonna take us to repent. And don't be scared of the word repent. Repent, repent just said, I'm gonna put all this other nonsense in the rearview mirror and walk away from it. But some of us cannot walk away. From rebellion, drug addiction, sexual immorality, stubbornness, until we come before the throne of grace and ask God to help us. And, and let the Holy Spirit reckon with that seed. That when you get up, who the Son says free is free indeed. And you go back and you begin to learn of Him, learn of God by, by studying His Word. Every day, not, not, not just on Sunday. We said this way back many moons ago. You know, don't just pick up the Bible on a Sunday. Pick right. it up seven days a week. Because God is faithful. If if you still uh, acclimated into this in, into this season of your life, are, are you in this world? God is faithful. He's with you every day. He says, No, I will not leave you or forsake you. So if he won't, if he's already given us that promise, let's do the same of like, Lord, I'm gonna walk this thing out all the days of my life. Correct me in any way you can. Deliver me, because we want to be delivered. If you don't want to be delivered, I I can't help you. I, can, yeah. I can't. There's 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 nothing that we can say today if you don't want to seek your deliverance. But if I know the power of the Holy Spirit, He'll tug at your heart, because He said, Jesus said, you know, God has given my, my Father has given me those that believe in me, and so if we believe in Him, let's go ahead. And and take take off the layers of of of, of re rejection and rebellion. Just peel them off. Just say, Lord, no more, no more rebellion. I'm gonna follow your word. Let let the word be your guide. Back to you, Cuz. After a word from our sponsor. Eddie J. Let our community, the listening audience know what's happening on Facebook with you. Every Monday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, I come on with a piece entitled Monday Morning Manna. And this is the year to believe God for the laughable, ridiculous, and the impossible. So tune in every Monday from the Peoria Friendship Facebook page or the Eddie Jackson Jr. Facebook page. And we are believing God for the laughable, ridiculous, and the impossible. Tune in and be blessed. Guys, go ahead and close us out. All right. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this time uh, of learning in this episode. 
Lord, we thank you again for the reminder. Uh, if we we'll just be willing and obedient, uh, we can experience uh, the life that you will have for us. You want us to have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, but if we uh, rebel and, and reject, uh, then we will not be able to, to experience what you have us to do. Uh, Lord, you have called each and every one of us, all of us, you have given us a purpose and a plan for our lives. But we can't fulfill it if we are in rebellion or rejection. So, Lord, we come against rebellion and rejection and double-mindedness right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, we pray, God, that you will help us to always be willing and obedient to your will, your word, and your way. And as we are obedient to your will, your word, and your way, we can't go wrong. Uh, you will always lead us and guide us. So, Lord, we thank you in advance for those who will watch uh, this episode, those who will be changed, those who will acknowledge they've been doing it wrong and they need to get it right. Uh, so, God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for those who are going to be strengthened by the reminder of this episode. So, God, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do to everyone who watches or listens to this. And Lord, we give you glory. Mm -hmm. Lord, we give you honor. Lord, we give you praise. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. and amen. 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 Thank you for listening to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. Partner with us. Like, subscribe, support. Visit our website, livingbiblehub.com. 
Until next time, peace, love, and blessing.